Hello and good afternoon from an unusually sunny Ipswich. Today we'll be taking a look at what First Class has to offer on Greater Anglia's relatively new Stadler Flirt units. But first, a bit about the station. As we enter, there's a ticket office just to my left, with there also being self-service ticket machines just ahead. Heading through the gate line, you'll find a Starbucks and a newsagent's, although these were still closed at the time of filming. Through these doors and back out into the sunshine, we find the platforms. Ipswich is an intermediate stop on the Great Eastern Main Line, being located about two thirds of the way between London and Norwich. The station sees two intercity services between the two cities per hour, as well as one semi-fast service that starts here, running through to London. At the time, they were only undergoing testing, but the semi-fast services are now operated by these rather nice Class 720 Bombardier Aventry units. Anyway, our train, which is the 1643 to London Liverpool Street, is the next service to depart from Platform 2. It was still closed at the time of filming is going to be a bit of a theme for this video, as I only filmed this the day after lockdown ended. And this was very much true for the first class lounge we would have had access to. Although if the one at Liverpool Street is anything to go by, then I doubt it's much to write home about. Our train eventually arrives from Norwich on time. The service through to London will be operated by this 100 mile per hour or 161 km an hour capable Class 745 Stadler Flirt unit. These trains first entered service with Greater Anglia in January 2020 to replace the old locomotive hauled trains that used to operate on this route. There are two versions of the Class 745. We've locked out and got one of the intercity units, although I believe it's still possible to get unlucky and end up being stuck with a Stansted Express unit on this route, which don't have any first class or buffet car, although maybe someone in the comments can verify this for me. One nice thing about these trains is that they feature fully level boarding, meaning it's possible for wheelchair users to access the train through each and every door. No seat reservations are offered on this service, so I'm free to choose my seat as I board. Personally, I don't think legroom's too bad, at least not for a relatively short journey. At the airline style seats you'll find this small but nonetheless sturdy tray table. Each seat also has access to both a 3-pin and USB plug socket, which is nice. So far so good, but unfortunately, these seats are not at all comfortable. They're rock hard and, strangely for a first class seat, don't even recline, which is a real letdown. Lastly, you'll also find a reading light and a window blind. For me, these seats are very uncomfortable and disappointing but let me know what you think of them in the comments below. Anyway, we depart Ipswich on time. As we set off, we should probably take a quick look at our route for today. Welcome to this service for London Liverpool Street. We will be calling at Manning Tree. Culture. Our journey to the capital will see us heading southwest on the Great Eastern Main Line and via the likes of Colchester and Chelmsford before arriving into London Liverpool Street. Today we'll see us covering around 69 miles or 111 kilometers. Scheduled travel time is 1 hour and 15 minutes and our top speed will be 100 miles an hour. Welcome to this service for London Liverpool Street. We will be calling at Manning Tree, Colchester, Chelmsford, Stratford and London Liverpool Street. Disabled facilities may be changes located at carriage C towards the front of the train, bike storage carriage D. CCTV will be in operation. We're treated to some rather lovely views of the river store as we approach our first stop of Manning Tree. We are now approaching Manning Tree. If you ever find yourself at Manningtree Station, 
as I once did, be sure to check out the station buffet as they do a cracking breakfast. Time for a wonder. Luggage storage is plentiful, with both overhead racks and these little stacks dotted throughout the saloon. There are a number of toilets located throughout the train and no complaints from me here as everything was impeccably clean, well stocked and in good working order. While perhaps not that comfortable, the seats do certainly look the part, and they definitely blend into what in my opinion at least, is a very smart looking interior. Separating first and standard class is the buffet, although again, closed at the time of filming. This is also where you'd usually be able to redeem a drink and light snack, which are included in the price of a first class ticket. Just beyond this, you'll find a couple of spaces for wheelchair users, as well as the accessible toilet. These trains can accommodate up to six full-size bicycles. While not mandatory, you are recommended to reserve these, although this can be done at no extra cost. Then this is what you can expect from standard or second class. I can say from past experience that the standard class seats are honestly much better than the ones found in first class. Granted, they're not quite as spacious, but I've always found them to be very comfortable and would be the option I'd choose if I were travelling with Greater Anglia in the future. As you have probably noticed by now, these trains are very long, 12 coaches in fact. In the middle of each 12 car train, you'll find this small corridor, with this bit housing stuff to do with the train's power and whatnot. Another nice feature of these trains is that they have these really good and clear information screens throughout. Lastly, as you would expect, this train is Wi-Fi enabled, although the speed isn't particularly fast. Anyway, we're now at Colchester, which is known for being the first major city in Roman Britain, having been established at least as far back as 79 AD. As you can see, much of the trip is spent travelling at top speed, which is certainly much faster than the cars on the adjacent A12. As with other Stadler flirts I've been on around Europe, I found the ride quality to be really rather smooth and quiet. Next up is Chelmsford, which is often considered to be the birthplace of the radio, due to its strong ties with the Marconi company, although this fact is often disputed. Not long after departing Chelmsford, we find ourselves in the outskirts of London, 
and fast closing in on Liverpool Street Station. Now, there's no denying that these Class 745 Stadler flirts really are nice trains, but the first class seats are big letdowns in my opinion, and take away from what are otherwise fantastic trains. So, what about the cost? Well, my advanced first class single cost me £10.55, including railcard discount of a third. For me, I think that represents fair value for money. Anyway, I appreciate that these are just my thoughts and opinions, so be sure to let me know yours in the comments below. Just a few minutes out of Liverpool Street, we arrive at Stratford, which is located in close proximity to Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. We eventually pull into London Liverpool Street, just over 5 minutes early, at around 10 to 6. With that, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving it a like. If you're new to the channel, then be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on Friday.